Okie dokie. Um, I am Danielle Desjardin. I'm the Visitor Experience Manager here at the Children's Museum of Naples. Um, our mission right here is where children and their families play, learn, and dream together. So we're all about um, participating together, learning together, hands-on activities, children learning through play. So it's a very fun environment. Um, you'll see some pictures of the exhibits and some of our staff in the exhibit, um, which the position that we're gonna talk about specifically is within the exhibits playing and interacting with everyone. Um, so I'm the visitor experience manager. I'm in charge of all of the staff that work within the exhibits and the museum that work the POS stations at the front desk in the store. And then I'm also in charge of all of the exhibits, all of the maintenance, new exhibits coming in um, and anything that's broken that needs fixing. Because as we know with children, things do break often. Um, my background, I actually graduated from FGCU in the hospitality program. Um, I started at Come On, there was a job description that was sent out through the Career Center and I applied and I have been here at Come On ever since. It'll be seven years this November that I have been with Come On. So there's always opportunity for growth within the museum, no matter where you start. Um, we like to um, definitely keep staff here for years and years. So if there's ever an opportunity um, that arises when working at Come On that you're interested in, um, we love to have staff apply for that. Come On, um, we were founded in 2002, so we're getting ready to be 10 years old next year. We are no longer a toddler. We are definitely um, learning every year since we've been around for so long. Um, we are a nonprofit organization. So we rely heavily on um, private donations and grants. Um, we actually just had our fundraiser night at the museum, which we raised over a million dollars, which is gonna help out bringing more programs into the museum, um, taking programs out into the community um, and serving underserved families as well. We are a brain building powerhouse fueled by STEAM. So we really try to incorporate STEAM into everything that we do here in the museum, whether it's exhibits, whether it's programs or workshops. Um, we really try to take education and put it everywhere possible for the children. We have 12 permanent exhibits and then we have one exhibit that rotates every three months. It's called our traveling exhibit. COVID has changed that a little bit. So we have, um, some exhibits that we do in-house that we will put in the traveling exhibit gallery. Some we get from other museums and we bring them here. Um, it's just a little bit tricky right now because of COVID. Um, right now we have Argentina's Ninos, which came from Missouri. And then we are going to do our own traveling exhibit um, come May. We have two floors, we have a backyard. Um, and we are 30,000 square foot in total upstairs and downstairs. So the opportunities we have right now for jobs, um, we have guest services specialist, one that I'm gonna touch on heavily today. We also have summer camp assistant, and then we have internship opportunities. Um, what's posted right now on Indeed and our website are guest service specialist and summer camp assistant. Um, internship opportunities, um, I believe through our education department is posted through the College of Education. We do have other internship opportunities for hospitality, um, maintenance exhibits. So if there's ever an internship that you're interested in, but you don't see it advertised, please feel free to contact us. Um, we are always looking for new opportunities with interns. So guest services, this one right here is what we're gonna to touch on. That is within the visitor services department. That's the one that we are trying to hire for immediately. So what is a guest services specialist? So a guest services specialist, like I said, we're a children's museum. So we are all about fun. Um, we need individuals that are not afraid to be silly. The best way to teach a child that it is okay to be comfortable in their own skin is by you guys being silly and having fun. Um, we like to have big personalities, really think Disney, um, a welcoming environment. Yes, we want everyone to have a professional experience, but we want to give that in a super fun way. 
You know, we want to talk about the kids' interests. Oh my gosh, you have Superman on your shirt. Did you see the latest superhero movie? You know, and really kind of nerd out, if you will, with the kids. Um, it is a fun atmosphere here. We need staff that can converse with people, have good conversations, um, ask questions. Um, we want you to come out of your shell, come out of your skin. Like I said, the best way to children to be comfortable is by you doing that as well. We want everyone that comes in this building to feel like family. We want them to leave the museum and talk about it with their friends, tell their other families that they know, wow, we had such a great experience at the Children's Museum. You guys definitely should check it out. We want them to come back and enjoy the museum time and time again. We need staff to take initiative. Yes, you have a job description, but there are definitely things that um, may not be necessarily on your job description. But if you see something that needs to be done, we want to make sure that anybody in the museum, no matter what position you're in, can get that done. So if you see that, you know, the chalkboard in the art studio needs to be wiped down or we need to cut some paper for one of our workshops that's happening and help out one of our teammates, please, we want everyone to feel like a, an, a team member here, okay? We need staff that are reliable, that are on time and here for their shift. The museum opens at nine o'clock. So we all have to get here, you know, at 8.30, make sure the museum is opened and ready to go at nine o'clock because no matter what, the museum is going to open at nine and our visitors are gonna start coming in. So everything needs to be prepared and ready to go for the kids to come and have fun. Understand the value and importance of a positive customer service experience. If we are not giving our visitors a great experience and making them feel welcomed, they're not going to want to come back to the museum. And we want the kids to enjoy and have fun and we want them to learn. So giving a positive experience is the utmost important thing. What does a typical day look like as a guest service specialist? So this is, I went ahead and put um, our daily schedule. So this is something that our visitor services assistant manager creates based off of everyone's availability, what volunteers are here for the day, what daily programs we're running, lunch breaks. So it may look a little bit confusing to you right now, but I promise there's a method to the madness. So we have it broken up by hour. So let's say, for example, you are Danica. So Danica is in zone one and two, which is downstairs in all of these exhibits. Um, and Danica is rotating through each exhibit, talking to all of our families, resetting the exhibits, picking up and sanitizing because with COVID, we are sanitizing more than normal, okay? So Danica is in this exhibit from nine to 10 with Diego, one of our volunteers. And then Danica moves from 10 to 11 upstairs. Um, upstairs are the exhibits, the Curious Kids, Build It, Library, Vet Clinic, and then our new Inventioneers Lab. Um, so right now we're working on textiles. So a lot of weaving and sewing. And then Danica moves down to the art studio. So we like you guys to bounce around every single hour. So you have a good understanding of the entire museum. You're in all of the exhibits because it can get a little bit boring if you're in one place for a couple of hours. So we want to make sure everybody knows everything in the museum. If there's a call out this way, you guys can jump in and help out wherever is needed. We want everyone to have a good understanding of the museum and we train you on all of this. So at no point are you left alone without knowing what you're doing. The first couple of weeks starting out as a staff member, you are paired with someone, as I say, attached at the hip with that person. So let's say you were training with Danica, you would bounce around with Danica and in each area you would get training on opening the exhibit, talking to your visitors during the hour, and then closing that exhibit at the end of the hour. You have programs on here. So this 10 o'clock program is our little learners. All of these programs are run by our education department. So this is a story time and an activity. These are programs that we would talk about in our morning meeting so you know what's happening during the day, because we do get a lot of questions at the front desk about what workshops are you doing today? What's the program? When is it happening and where? 
So it's really good, even though we're not teaching these programs, it's good for us to know as much as we can so we can relay that to our visitors and answer their questions. And then we have lunch breaks on here and then front desk. So whatever staff member is running the front desk in the store for that day. Um, we open exhibits um, from that nine to 10 hour. So that means if you're scheduled to be in the art studio from nine to 10, you are resetting the projects, putting out the paint, the paper, um, and making sure that everything is set to the lesson plan that needs to be there for the day. If you're in the art studio, for example, from this four to five hour right here, you would be closing the art studio. So what that means is we would be taking away the projects, we would be wiping down the tables and sanitizing the chairs, and then um, closing the art studio at five o'clock and jumping out and helping reset another exhibit at the end of the day. Um, lunch breaks, we do have a break room. You guys are more than welcome to eat in the break room or you can go off site for your half hour lunch break as long as you stick to your 30 minutes. Um, nightly switching, being a children's museum, you know, and having the kids play with um, so many things throughout the day that someone else is gonna play with as well. We do what's called a daily switch. So we take away at the end of the evening and we put a second set out. So that is, you know, dress up items, the fruit and veggies that they play with in the farm, all of the bowls and plates that are in the restaurants. Um, we really like to sanitize as much as possible and try to keep everything clean and tidy. Um, so these are some of the exhibits that you guys would walk through. Um, this right here is our pond. This is where the kids fish. This is our backyard area. They've got a little maze that they can walk through, a chalk wall that they can color on. And then um, not pictured in this is some hula hoops and some bouncy balls that they can play with as well. This is our mother nature's house. It goes through the four seasons, summer, fall, winter, and spring. And then this is our water table right here that's also in the backyard that the kids can play in. So these are just some of the exhibits that you guys would rotate through talking to our visitors and then resetting as well. Working hours. So our shifts are pretty flexible. I put our standard shifts here, 8.45 to 5.15. Um, the museum does open at nine, but we like everyone to get here at 8.45. We have a morning meeting every morning. So that's where all staff, managers, um, educators, guest service specialists. We talk about what's happening that day, if there's any tours, classes, workshops, so we have a good understanding of what is happening that day. And then 515 is a rough estimate. It really just kind of depends on what happens during the museum. Yesterday we had 900 visitors that came through the doors, so I'm sure the staff didn't get out of here until 530. You could get out of here at five o'clock. It really just depends on how much traffic we have during the day and how much reset there is. Um, 8.45 to one is a shift for four hours or one to 5.15. Um, we need staff that can work every day of the week except Wednesdays because we are closed every Wednesday. Um, we are flexible. So if you guys have an early class that doesn't end until 9.30, or you have a class that starts at one o'clock and you can't get here, you need to leave at 1230, um, totally flexible. So if you guys do apply for a position, please just let us know that you have classes at this time, you know, when you're available at, you know, X, Y, and Z time, we are very flexible. How do you apply? Our website right here, I put the exact link um, if you go to our website, there is a page um, in the about section called join our team. Every single position that we are currently taking applications for is listed on the website. All of these positions are on Indeed as well. So you can go to Indeed or you can go to our website to apply. Um, we are taking the application. So if you guys would like the application, I will put my email in the chat here. And you guys can email directly if you'd like the application, or you can go to our website or Indeed and just submit your resume and cover letter. Please make sure um, in the subject, when you do apply, you let us know which position you are interested in because there are three or four that we are hiring for right now. Um, 
we do have a hiring event tomorrow and Thursday and a couple more dates in May. The hiring event is one of those, you can just show up, you can get an on the spot interview um, from 10 to two tomorrow and then 10 to two Friday. So if you guys would like to just arrive with your completed application or your resume and cover letter, you can, and you can get an on the spot interview for whichever position you're interested in tomorrow or Friday. Um, that concludes my presentation. Do you guys have any questions for me about the museum or about the position itself? Thank you, Danielle. That was great. Um, I just thought maybe you could mention um, the attendance that we talked about earlier, just to give the students an idea of like how many people come through the museum and what they would be encountering every day. Sure. So um, when the weather is really yucky outside like it was yesterday, that's when we see an increase in attendance. So for example, yesterday we had 902 people that came through this door from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. A normal day would be about two to 300 in attendance. The weekends can be busier because most people are um, they're traveling for the weekend or they're out of work so they can take the kids, the kids that are out of school also. Um, when there are holidays with schools, specifically Collier County, we do see an uptick in attendance as well. So when the weather outside is kind of yucky and the kids are out of school, we definitely see a lot more people through the building um, than when kids are in school. Great, thanks. Let's see, do we have any questions in the chat? Are there any restrictions for volunteer hours? There are no restrictions. The volunteer hours are pretty flexible as well. Um, we have some volunteers that come in three to five after school, some that work, you know, 10 to one on the weekends. It really just kind of depends on what your availability is. I can, I can email this presentation to that email. Yes. Anybody else curious about things that you can do to work at the museum or um, whether working with the students or other opportunities that they have there? Or is it students, the kids? I have a question. Yes. Hi. <laughs> it's nice to see you. <laughs> Put nice a face to you. To me. Um, so I was just wondering if you could speak more on like how the guest service specialist um, could implement like the different aspects of STEAM when they're interacting with guests and the kids that are at the museum. That is a great question. So when it comes to that specifically, since it's education based, that is a type of training that actually comes from our education department. So our team and programs, they will teach you guys how to interact on a whole bunch of different levels with the kids. You know, how to learn, um, how to read people as well, when a family wants to have a longer conversation with you, when they really just want to know the basics of the exhibit, you know, and then my name is Danielle, please feel free to let me know if you've got any questions. Um, and then integrating all of those educational tools. That's something that when you guys start with us, our department will teach you, you know, the basics of your job and then the education team will take it a whole level further. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Julia. Um, what is the most common age group that comes into the museum? Toddlers, absolutely toddlers. Um, I would say two to probably five or six is the biggest age range that we get right now because they have the opportunity to come in. You know, they're not in school. Um, we do see on the weekends more um, kids that are probably eight to 12. I would say 12 is probably on the high range. Um, we are definitely a toddler museum. So if there are older kids coming in, it's because they're coming in with younger siblings. Great. Um, do you currently have any opportunities available in technology or is that something that happens um, at the museum? I would say technology more on the marketing side. Um, we do have an opportunity that we've been bouncing around within the management team. We just don't have a, um, job description or an internship on paper for that yet. If that's something that you're interested in for marketing, just feel free to email us and we can give you more details one-on-one. -on -one. 
Daniel, you may have covered this and I apologize. Um, is it a paid internship at the museum or is it um, for credit or just for volunteering? Uh, internships are paid based on the position, depends on the pay also per hour. Okay, thank you. Do you guys have any other questions? Uh, I guess, do you guys have like any full-time position openings? Um, I'm actually graduating in like a week. So I'm more, I was thinking that this was gonna be more of like, uh, like full-time positions. Um, we have a couple right now. We have our um, executive assistant full-time position that they're hiring for um the advancement coordinator position and then there may be some opportunities and fall within the programs department full-time as a programs coordinator so if that's something you're interested in i would look at those job descriptions and then um if you are interested in programs coordinator i would just check back on our website in the fall okay thank you you're welcome Danielle, do you see the questions? I do. I honestly can't answer that question. That would be a question for our marketing and communications manager. The question is if uh, the marketing internship is available for recent graduates as well. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. uh, that would be an excellent question. I'm going to put her email in the chat. Um, she is marketing at command.org. Thank you all for your questions. We can have more though. Does anybody have anything else they'd like to know? Is the museum connected with the, uh, hosp the children's museum, the children's hospital at all? Other uh, than the name? I know it's no, the same people. The but... name is the only thing that connects us. We have the same donor, Tom Golisano. Right, right. Okay. We do get that question a lot. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Don't be shy. <laughs> Thank you guys for all of your questions. I love them. All right. Is there an email that I could use to coordinate future volunteering experiences? Volunteer. Yes, volunteers at command.org. Um, Ann Johnston is our volunteer coordinator. Yes, um, this is a great opportunity for service learning as well. Um, so if you guys do have hours to complete, um, you can contact Ann. We have had a lot of FGC students with service learning come through here and complete them. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Well, Danielle, thank you. We had some good questions and um, students can do lots of different things here at the museum. And when you have your uh, nieces and nephews and little brothers and sisters around town, maybe you can bring them in to check out it's a great place. Thank you guys so. for having me. And I really appreciate your time today and listening to this presentation. Okay, here's the website for the Career Development Office for any of the needs that, oops, did it come out? Oh, let's see. Sorry, let's see. Here we go. Um, now that you're getting ready, some of you are getting ready to graduate and, or just preparing for the next couple of years to do that, check out Career Development Services and all the resources that we have available to help you prepare for going on these interviews and um, hiring events so that your resume is ready and you know how to present yourself the best way you can. So again, thanks Danielle and thank you all for being here today. Have a great uh, rest of the week. Last um, Friday noon Zoom is job, uh, learning how to negotiate your first salary. So um, join us on Friday if you can. All right, everyone have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye guys. Oh, Danielle, I'm going to leave that up. Um... Okay. Bye. It was so nice to meet you. Meet you. I'll see you tomorrow. Yes.
see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All right. She has an interview tomorrow. Oh, well, fantastic. I love seeing her name up there. <laughs> oh, good. Good, good. All right. Well, thank you again. And um, good thank luck with you. your uh, hiring event. Take care. Thank you. You too.